aircraft face many threats to their survival, anything from problems during the launch to debris orbiting the Earth. However, one of the surprising problems is that of corrosion. We think about space as being a vacuum, but really, as far as there out you go from our planet, the atmosphere thins and thins and thins, and it comes at a near vacuum. But there are still occasional atoms drifting about in space. And when these are combined with cosmic rays and wild fluctuations in temperature, they do represent a significant threat to unprotected spacecraft. From Earth, space is generally thought of being anywhere higher up than around about 100 kilometers. Though there isn't a boundary, there's a rather gradual change in conditions. But at around about 100 kilometers in the air, it's not really dense enough to generate much lift for an aircraft. So in order to stay aloft, an aircraft must fly much faster and faster and faster to generate the lift required. Now beyond 100 kilometers, that speed approaches the orbital velocity that's required for satellites and other objects to maintain their altitude. So it's a reasonable place to give for the start of space. However, the atmosphere does extend well beyond this point, even if it's a much thinner and thinner level and fluctuating level as well. The atmosphere of the Earth can be detected to at least 10,000 kilometers from the surface which compares to the altitude of the International Space Station at around about 400 kilometers. The first region, the upper atmosphere, which can be referred to as space, is what's known as the thermosphere, which is where many satellites and also the space station orbit. Temperatures here fluctuate wildly depending upon day and night, and also with the activity of the sun itself, it's because the layer absorbs much of the X-rays and ultraviolet light, causing the elements in the atmosphere there to become highly energized with oxygen splitting from its common form of O2 to atomic oxygen or just O. This free oxygen can then can bind onto elements on the outside of spacecraft, satellites and things like solar panels causing them to oxidize and possibly fail. When this corrosion is combined with charged particles of the solar wind which is altitude are responsible for things like the northern and southern lights substances like silver, plastic, can soon become damaged and non-functional. In attempt to prevent this damage, coatings can be applied to the exposed surfaces. This can be things like gold, platinum, or even some silicon-based substances. However, this is not a perfect solution, as micrometeorites can puncture the skin, and then the equipment they are protecting is now exposed to corrosion. The other problem is with the dramatic temperature swings in this region which of course cause the spacecraft to expand and contract. However, because parts of it made from various different substances, they'll expand and contract at different rates, causing significant stress on the object each time it goes through a cycle of heating and cooling. Eventually this may cause cracks and faults to develop, which of course only make the corrosion problem worse. All this means, in order for a spacecraft to survive for long, the problem of corrosion needs to be taken seriously, otherwise it's just going to fail.